Hey, man, I see you looking at Studio One. You really thinking about cheating on Pro Tools? Well, look, I ain't going to tell nobody, but here are some settings that you need to change in Studio One to make it feel a lot more like Pro Tools, man. <laughs> Let me show you something. What up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyProAudio.com. Now, look, man, I know. I'm gonna make some folks upset with this one because you know your boy is a Pro Tools user, man. I was born using Pro Tools, but lately I've been having a wandering eye and <laughs> I've been looking a lot at Studio One. And so if you're anything like me, coming from Pro Tools and starting to use Studio One more, here are some settings that you must change inside your Studio One in order to just make you feel like you at home again, man. All right, first thing first, I gotta change the shortcuts over so that they can match the Pro Tools shortcuts. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then you know how important it is to use shortcuts to just make you better and faster while you actually are editing and recording and mixing in the session. Fortunately for us, Studio One knows that we probably gonna wanna use Pro Tools shortcuts. So if you just go up to the Studio One menu and go down to the keyboard shortcuts menu, you can actually change your keyboard mapping scheme to be Pro Tools, right? But sometimes you need to take it a step further and actually customize. So one thing I like uh, to do in addition to setting my keyboard mapping scheme to Pro Tools is to actually go ahead and add new shortcuts that don't map over because all of them are not going to translate so some of the shortcuts as you work in you might realize hey this doesn't translate exactly as it did from pro tools but it's okay because you can make it all right so one of them that i love one shortcut that i love is the ability to jump from the edit window to the mix window by using command equal or control equal if you on a pc and for that that's called they call it the console on this uh view here and so in the view i simply went down to console and right now it's set to three right i can go here and say you know what i'm gonna hold command and equal right at the same time and i'm gonna assign that when i hit okay that'll apply and now you see i can easily open up my mix window very quickly and jump back and forth between mixing and editing and so i can have this window be as large as i want to or even come over to this little thing right here and pop it out just like we would in pro tools to where it's in a separate pane if you really like that feeling i'm not really mad at the um picture in picture style that studio one does but if you want to pop that out then you can now use command equal and other shortcuts just like you would in pro tools so that's the first thing man get them shortcuts right another pet peeve of mine that's super annoying when you first open up studio one is that the playback cursor doesn't just automatically return to wherever you started playing it from in pro tools it's the default behavior for the cursor to start back playing wherever you started playing from and for me that's just crucial i hate it when it just keeps on going like a tape machine let me give you an example of what i'm talking about so if i hit play on this track you can see my playback cursor going through the session when i stop the cursor stops where i stopped it at and then when i hit play it's just going to keep on playing from that section now if i'm working on a critical editing task or anything and i want to make sure that the playback cursor goes back to that same position every time real simple fix even though it's not very easy to find uh, right away you just want to go up to the transport menu go to options and hit return to start on stop with this return to start on stop enabled now every time that you stop the playback the playback cursor is going to return to the starting position man that frustrated me for the longest when i started studio one let me know in the comments if that one was getting you too all right, so now I'm gonna use my Pro Tools shortcut to make a new track, Shift Command N, and the new track dialog box is gonna pop up for me. We just gonna name this Record, and we're gonna keep it in mono. I got my input one set, cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna hit okay on that. Now, yep, yep, you see I get in signal there. Now here's the thing. When I punch in, in Studio One, there is an issue that we have to address with one of the settings. So let me just record something. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, 
three. All right, bet. So I got that in. And then let's just say I wanted to punch in part of this. To punch in, typically I'm just gonna start the playback by using the space bar like I normally would. And you can use command space or the numer numeric three on your uh, numeric keypad, just like you would in Pro Tools to start the recording. Um, but so here we go, I'm gonna punch in, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna punch in, we're gonna punch out. Here's the problem though, in Pro Tools, when you are in punch mode, it automatically starts recording the audio, right? And that way, if I do a late punch or punch in or out too uh, too late or too early, I can go and adjust those boundaries. You can see that it didn't catch um, any extra audio while I wasn't recording that really sucks man so like you got to be really on point with your punching in unless you change this feature to do this i'm going to go up to the studio one menu go to preferences i'm going to go to the advanced tab and choose audio once you do that you will see a little button here that says pre-record audio input and it'll give you five seconds as a default to me that's enough so i never changed that i hit yes and then you can either hit okay or apply if i hit okay it'll apply it and now let's try this punch in again punch in punch out and now you can see that there's actually sufficient audio before I did my punch in. That's really dope. Um, I, I wish that was automatically enabled whenever I started to punch. So another setting that I feel like is a must change is the ability to locate whenever clicking in an empty space. So sometimes I just want to click in this empty spot and not necessarily on a clip to actually jump to that location. Maybe I'm just clicking on a different track or anything else. But right now, my playback cursor won't locate when I'm just clicking in an empty spot. So for me, I want to change that. So I'm going to go again up to my studio one menu. I'm going to go to preferences. And then we're gonna go to editing and then right here in the editing tab of the advanced, so preferences, advanced, editing tab, right? And then hit locate when clicked in an empty space. You wanna go ahead and turn that on. That way now, whenever I click in an empty spot, you can see my playback cursor will update to that spot and I can start playing directly from there. Now, this next tip is more of a aesthetic type of setting that you could set, but I like to see my tracks full color. It helps me, especially when I have a lot of tracks in the session to be able to jump around very quickly and see what's what based on the color coding. Right now, we just got these little color bars, but there is a way that we can change this setting as well. I'm gonna go back up to Studio One and open up my preferences again. And when I look for it, we're gonna go and go ahead and click on colorize track controls. And when I apply this, boom, you can see how that track becomes fully colored, right? And then there's another one we wanna go to, let me find it. We're gonna go to console, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit colorize channel strip. So once I hit that, apply that, and now you can see that the tracks, the track controls and the channel strips are fully colored. And for me, that's just gonna make editing and moving around your session, navigating around the session when you have a large track count, very, uh, it's just gonna make it quicker, man. So now that we got that applied, we can hit okay. All right, y'all, so those are my top five Studio One settings and preferences that you need to change to make you feel like you more at home if you were a Pro Tools user, man. So let me know if you have any more settings that you change to make Studio One feel more like whatever doll that you use, man. Uh, yeah, I'm having fun in Studio One, so let's just keep rocking. I'm gonna be learning and sharing as I go everything that I learned about Studio One with y'all right here on this channel. So if you wanna learn more, let me know down in the comments what you wanna know next about using Studio One. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavyproaudio.com. Mix niggas coming up, man. Make sure you get your tickets. I'll see you in Atlanta. Be dope.